you kept bringing up sort of coding stuff up. I just, I wanted to ask uh, two things. First of all, like what what programming uh, language do you like, and also what because um, you're as a computational quantum astrochemist. No, yes, no, no, that's correct. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you're kind of um, you could say you're you're actually understanding some exceptionally complicated things with one of the things you're using is the tools of um, computation, of programming. Is there a device you can give to people? Because I, I know quite a few that have not practiced that tool and have fallen in love with a particular science, whatever it's biology and chemistry and physics and so on. And um, if they were interested in learning to program and learning to use computation as a tool in their particular science, is there advice you can give on programming and also just maybe a comment on your own journey and the use of uh, programming in your own life? Well, I'm a terrible programmer. A lot of scientists, their programming is bad because we never learned formal programming. We learned science, physics, chemistry. And then we were told, oh, you, can, you have to get these equations modeled and run through a simulation. And you're like, oh, okay, so I'm gonna learn how to code to do this. And you learn, just as much as you need to run these simulations and no more. So they're rarely optimized. Um, they're really clunky. Six months later, you can't read your own code. Yeah. All my variable names are extremely embarrassing. I still have error, <laughs> error messages for different compilation errors that say things like, at least your dad loves you, Clara. <laughs> you know, it oh, doesn't so help me at all. It's like humor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Just like you suck at coding, but there's other things in your life. So I'm a bad programmer. And so, you know, if that will give hope to anyone else who's a bad programmer, I can still do pretty impressive science. Yes. But I learned, I think I started learning MATLAB and Java when I was in college. Mm -hmm. It did me no good at all. I, it has not been particularly useful. I learned some Fortran that was very useful, even though it's really not a fun language because so much of legacy code is in Fortran. And so if you want to use other people's code who have now retired, Fortran will be nice. And then I used IDL to visualize. So that uh, simulation and body simulation, that was all Fortran and IDL. But thankfully, since I've left college, I've just learned Python like a normal person and that has been much nicer. So most of my code now is in Python. I should also make a few quick comments as well. So one is uh, you say you're uh, sort of bad at programming. I've um, worked with a lot of excellent scientists that are quote unquote bad at programming. They're not, it gets the job done. In fact, there's a, there's a downside to sort of, um, especially getting a software engineering education. If I were to give advice, especially if you're doing a computer science degree and you're doing software engineering, is not to get lost in the, in the like optimization of the correct, there's an obsession, you can see it in like Stack Overflow of the correct way to do things. And I think you can too easily get lost in uh, constantly trying to optimize and do things the correct way when you actually never get done. The same thing happens, you have like uh, communities of people obsessed with productivity and they keep researching productivity hacks, and then they spend like 90% plus of their time figuring out how to do things productively, and they never actually do anything. So there's a certain sense, if you focus on the task that needs to be done, that's what programming is for. So not over-optimizing, not, not, not thinking about variable names uh, in, the, in the following sense. Sometimes you think, okay, I'm gonna write code that's gonna last for decades. In reality, your code, if it's well written or poorly written, will be very likely obsolete very quickly. Uh, the point is to get the job done uh, really well. So there's a trade-off there that you you have to you have to make sure to uh, strike. I, I should also comment as a public service announcement or a request: if there's any world-class Fortran or Cobol programmers out there, I'm looking for them. I want to talk to you because <laughs> I, I think that will they're... not be me. I'm a terrible <laughs> Fortran programmer. But it's fascinating because so much of the world in the past and still runs exactly. on these programming languages and there's like no experts on it. So they're all uh, retiring. Yeah. I, I disagree slightly in that I think because I can get the job done, I'm a programmer. Yeah. But because no one else can look at my code and know how I got my job done, I'm a bad programmer. That's how I'm defining it. Yes. 
Including and yourself, including six myself, months six months later. Yeah. I'm working with a new student right now, and she sent me some messages on Slack, being like, "What is this? Um, what is this file that you've got um, with some um, functions that run?" And I was like, "I, I." <laughs> This was from 2018. It wasn't that long ago. And I can no longer remember what that code does. I'm going to spend now two days reading through my own code yeah. and trying to improve it. And I, I do think that's frustrating. And so I think my advice to any young people who want to get into astronomy or astrobiology or quantum chemistry is that I certainly find it much easier to teach the science concepts to a programmer than the programming to a scientist. And so I would much, much faster hire someone who knows programming but barely knows where space is mm -hmm. than teach programming to an astronomer. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, okay, this is true. I mean, yeah, there's some basics. I'm uh, I'm focusing too much on the silver lining because the people that write like MATLAB code, yeah, single variable, uh, single letter variable <laughs> names, those kinds of things. And it's accessibility, right? It's I want my so my code to be open source, but it, mm -hmm. and it is. It's on GitHub. Anyone can download it. But is it really open source if it's written so cryptically, so poorly that no one can really use it to its full functionality? Have I really published my work? And that weighs on on me, I feel guilty for my own inadequacies as a programmer. <laughs> but you can only do so much. So I've already learned quantum chemistry and astrophysics, so, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is, there is, uh, it, there's all kinds of ways to contribute to the world. One of them is publication, but uh, publishing code is, is a fascinating way to contribute to the world, even if it's very small, very basic element, uh, great code, I guess I was also kind of criticizing the software engineering process versus like, which is a good thing to do is code that's readable, almost like without documentation, exactly. it's readable. It's understandable. Uh, the variable names, the structure, all those kinds of things. And it's, that's the dream. That's the dream. 